Hello everyone, welcome to another uh, Ozen Engineering uh, video on ANSYS products. Today uh, we're going to look at something uh, very different. Uh, we're going to use uh, ANSYS Fluent, uh, you know, our uh, well-known fluids uh, solver as, as a non-fluid solver. We're, we're going to apply it uh, to a electronics problem. We're going to uh, set up an electronic potential field problem and then we're going to solve it. So uh, even though it's so interesting to me, this is, you know, a CFD tool, what we're solving is, is literally a, a, you know, totally non-CFD problem. So let me first uh, introduce you to our problem. Uh, we're we're going to be looking at micron level uh, objects here and uh, objects of interest are our uh, anode zone, anode material here and cathode material on the left hand side and it is uh, filled with uh, fluid in between which is marked by, by green. So here actually we do have uh, three materials. We have our uh, fluid it's uh, our electrolytes and then uh, you know uh, we have our solid our an anode and cathode so let's you know uh, look at our anode walls so i'm gonna just say display and now you know we can see our anode side and then uh, let's uh, look at our cathode side and then like I mentioned we have electrolyte fluid uh, filling in between so fluent contains an electric potential solver which has been integrated with the electrochemical reaction model and um, you know frankly I'm not an expert on uh, electrochemistry I'm more, I have more of a fluids background but uh, there's a lot of information on electrochemical reactions in the fluent theory guide and uh, I'll be referring to it uh, a couple of times during this presentation you know if you have further questions my goal uh, in this tutorial is to show you how to set it up uh, in ANSYS fluent so uh, when we use the electric potential solver, we can simulate the electric potential field in both fluid and solid zones. Hence, you know, uh, we have both the zones in our domain. So uh, one limitation for electric potential model is that it cannot be used in simulations with walls that have shell conduction boundary condition, which uh, we do not have. So. Uh, I'm going to start talking about uh, setting up the electric potential model since we kind of introduced our model. So there truly is no flow. Uh, it's just, you know, we're going to uh, go ahead and actually uh, go and, uh, you know, turn the potential electrochemistry on. So this is, this is going to be uh, the main uh, panel we're going to be spending time on. So here... Uh, obviously we're going to solve the potential equation uh, we do not want to include the joule heating in, in, in the energy equation uh, and uh, we can you know also use ele electrochemistry or not we have three options and here we are interested in a lithium ion battery model so therefore we're going to select the, the lithium ion option which uh, then is going to uh, open up uh, this additional uh, tab below. So the first things uh, obviously want to do is uh, we want to do the zone selection uh, and uh, keep in mind that uh, we're not going to include the electro electrochemical heating in the energy. So we're not going to be solving energy equation at all in this case. So here, uh, our negative electrode zone is going to be our solid uh, dash A N for anode. Uh, our electrolyte, i.e. fluid region, is our fluid dash uh, EL. And then our 
positive electrode, then is uh, you know it will be called solid dash uh, CA for for the cathode zone. So these three need to be present uh, in order to uh, do, do this simulation. The next uh, tab we need to work through is the ECAM electrochemistry rate tab, and here uh, you you will see a set of numbers, uh, and these uh, are uh, essentially butler volner rate parameters, and all of these numbers. Uh, are uh, you know coming from the uh, fluent theory guide uh, f for you know lithium, lithium ion, so so these numbers we we just put in, uh, and uh, you know we could also use a single number for equilibrium potential, for the anode and cathode, but in this case we want to do a better job, so we have. Uh, we're using uh, user libraries. Uh, you know UDFs uh, to, to define our equilibrium potential for the anode and the cathode and uh, these files uh, should be placed uh, in the appropriate location in the uh, file structure so uh, what the user uh, needs to do is uh, have uh, w within the fluent files in the same folder ha have the uh, UDF file and ha have it compiled under the directory called libudf. Okay. And uh, so these are the settings talked about. Next step is the material properties. So uh, when we uh, go go through this again, these uh, numbers are coming from the um, fluent theory guide. Uh, you know, this is the maximum value of lit lit lithium concentration in cathode and anode, uh, and then the starting uh, concentration values, and uh, we ho also have our electrode initial concentration value. So uh, transference number uh, is defined as the following constant. For further detail, again, I'm going to refer you to the fluent theory guide as long as with the activity term. <clears throat> In our next tab, uh, we're going to move on to the advanced tab. And here uh, we have multiple options. Uh, we're not going to use in this example the physics-based aging model, but uh, you know, if it wants to be used, uh, uh, you know, uh, such information needs to be provided uh, for SCI growth, uh, and then you know, obviously, you can do lithium plating and cathode film growth model, and these we're not going to go into this in this tutorial, uh, and we're, we're going to keep all the expert control options on, uh, and. So, uh, you know, by default, uh, we want to include a uh, lithium migration term. It usually helps improve uh, solution convergence. And uh, also, you know, the other uh, two uh, gradients that they have to do with the, the convergence. So, uh, if you see any convergence issues, you can turn these options on and off uh, to, to get better convergence. Before I go oh, further on here, I'm going to get out of here and, and do the setup of the rest of the model. So uh, we're going to talk about materials, we're going to have air uh, as our electrolyte uh, in between the solids. Uh, so let's talk about our anode first. Uh, here uh, the two key properties we want to define are electrical conductivity and lithium diffusivity. And uh, again, these will be coming from our uh, user-defined functions. This also applies to our cathode material. And uh, let's move on with our boundary co uh, conditions. Uh, we're going to have symmetry uh, conditions. All around our object. So let me quickly display one of them. 
So we'll have symmetry all around, which means uh, we have a repeating pattern of anode and uh, cathode uh, electro uh, electrodes everywhere. Then uh, where the boundary condition is going to come in is here. Uh, at the end, uh, on the anode side, uh, we're going to have, when we look at the potential, uh, potential of zero. On the opposite end of the domain, for our cathode, here we're going to uh, define our um, potential and uh, the, the flux will be defined again in a user library. Another uh, key setup is uh, we want to go to residuals and here uh, we're essentially be going solving for only two equations, the potential and the lithium equation. Uh, and if we go to solution residuals, double click here. Okay. And uh, we can change the convergence criteria here. So again, uh, if we go under our solution controls, we do not have to touch these. We can go to equ equations and just confirm only two uh, equations are being considered. So once that setup is done, let, let's go back to our um, potential model, talk a little about uh, solution reporting. So once you turn your uh, potential electrochemistry on, ANSYS Fluent is going to uh, automatically generate two report definitions, uh, lithium ion battery SOC and lithium ion battery capacity. So you can find these definitions if you go under here. Those are the two definitions uh, Fluent is going to add in. So here they are. Uh, and um, what you want to do is uh, to get those reports, you want to uh, put in correct numbers uh, uh, for these four values as shown here. So next step uh, is, is going to be running the simulation. So let's, let's go to our uh, run, run calculation. See, uh, this is obviously going to be a transient simulation. We're going to uh, put 700 time step uh, with each time step size is one second. So it will be over like a 10 minute type integral. We're going to have 25 sub iterations so ob obviously uh, you know uh, you may have to uh, pl play with the number of time steps uh, versus maximum iterations uh, uh, to find the appropriate value for your specific application and um, you know you can check the total current at the anode and cathode and the goal is that the two current values must be ad adequately balanced out during every time step in, during the simulation. So please keep that in mind. So then we essentially hit the calculate button and then um, you know the, the solution starts going. So here uh, what we're looking at is the lithium concentration at uh, time zero. So once the solution is available, um, you know um, you're gonna ha you can look at this variation at uh, different time steps. Uh, so this concludes uh, our uh, presentation for today. Thank you for your interest.